Hey, hey, what's going on? We're recording. So welcome. Um, what I want to do in this lesson is go over some of the words that might give you difficulty when you're reading the article. I looked them over. I thought, ooh, these could be tough. So let's talk about them. So the first one is meanwhile. Meanwhile, and this is a good one to know because authors will often use it when two things are happening at the same time. So let's say you have a brother and a sister and maybe we'll just call him brother. The brother is eating di dinner. Let me say that correctly. The brother is eating dinner. Meanwhile, the sister is practicing her flute. So two things happening at the same time. It's a good word to be able to use in your writing. Meanwhile, so two things happening at the same time, and they're often not happening in the same room. The next one, habitual. And it, it says done or doing constantly or as a habit. And that's how I remember this word, like habit. So this happens consistently. This happens often. Um, a lot of times you will hear, he is a habitual smoker. You should not smoke. Habitual. He does it all the time. Habitual is often a bad thing, by the way. It's a, it's a way to describe something bad. Um, he is a habitual liar. So they just have a pattern of lying. Habitual. Yeah. Rarely do we ever use habitual for a good reason. In fact, I can't think of one right now. Let me just make this a little bigger so we don't have this distracting ad. Prominence. And another way to think of prominence is importance. So if something is important and you'll, you'll often hear, let me just write this down. I think I can write this down. Uh, yeah, I'll just put this. You might see like rose to prominence. That's often a term that we use at the same time. So after the hit song, she rose to prominence. So she became very famous too. Prominence is also has a little bit of fame to it. So it's a little bit famous, but definitely important. Um, after the big political race, she rose to prominence and would eventually become president. So, of course, this is in the future because we have never had a female president. Maybe one day, maybe one day, but rose to prominence. You will hear that quite a bit. Like they were not that important, not that famous before, but then they became famous. And in the article we read, Amanda Gorman, I think she was like kind of well known. But after the president's inaugural ceremony where she gave her, where she recited her poem, she definitely rose to prominence after that. The next one after prominence is, speaking of inaugural, not an easy word to say, inaugural means first or the beginning. So next year, the school year will start in August. So you could say the inaugural day of school is August 27th. I'm not sure if that's correct, but inaugural, it means the first. Um, baseball season, if you watch baseball at all, um, the inaugural pitch, I'm sure happened. I didn't watch it, but sometime yesterday, there was that first pitch to start the season, um, inaugural. But in the article, you will hear it referred to as like President Biden's inaugural address or inaugural ceremony. So the first day, the first hour at noon on January 21st, when President Biden like became president, he did it at his inaugural address where he addressed the crowd for the first time as president. So inaugural, whenever you see that, think of first. The next one, ooh, resonated, to be touched deeply resonated. Um, hang on, it's the wrong screen. This is the right screen. 
resonated to touch deeply. So you might hear a song and that could resonate with you. So it makes you have all the feels, as we say. Uh, maybe after reading Amanda Gorman's poem, you could say, wow, that really resonated with me. I really felt something after hearing that. So maybe you see a um, story about another person, like your age, and they did a good deed. That story might resonate with you. And you may say, oh, I want to do something similar. I want to do uh, some good things around my community as well. Resonated. You read something, you get all the feels. Maybe it changes you, maybe not, but you definitely get the feels. It resonates with you. You understand it. You connect with it. Centuries. I just wanted to do this one as a review because cent, hundred. We got a hundred cents and a dollar. Centuries. One century is a hundred years. So, therefore, centuries, hundreds of years, hundreds of years. All right, this next one wake. We talked about this in class. This is a surprisingly difficult word because it can be used at least three different ways. And in the article, it's not used in the two most common ways. All right. So you might wake up, right? You know that. Um, after a person passes away, they might, well, they don't, but their family will have a wake for them. So a ceremony where you say goodbye to that person, you know, like a funeral. Um, my uncle passed away yesterday. His wake is next week, something like that. But this is where um, it can get difficult, this one. So think of a boat. Think of the water. Think of the boat rushing through the water. Behind the boat is where you'll find the wake. And that means a disruption of the water, the wake. Oftentimes it's like a V, you know, the, the boat's wake. Well, we can use it in other ways. Uh, let's think of a storm. Often it's something that is disruptive, something that will uh, cause upheaval. That was one of our words last week, upheaval. So let's talk about a, um, a storm. You might hear that quite a bit too, in the wake of the storm. In the wake of the storm. Let me write that. In all caps. We don't need all caps. In the wake of the storm. Blah, blah, blah. So remember, whenever you start a sentence with in, in English, you're going to need a comma before the subject. So this could be the beginning of of the sentence, but you need that comma. I put the comma in there. So in the wake of the storm, uh, the people had to pick up their lives. So if it's a major storm and houses are all destroyed, in the wake of that storm, in the aftermath, what's left over, people's lives are probably going to be ruined for a while. So they might have to pick up their lives. They might have to uh, try to rebuild in the wake of the storm. Um, man, let's think of like a little little baby. Maybe you have a little brother or a little sister, and maybe they are just tearing the house up. They're going all over the place, just ruining things before you can stop them. Well, you might have to pick up the room in their wake. So after everything has happened, uh, hopefully the little little baby, make them pick up the toys they dumped. Teach them a lesson. But so the wake of something is uh, once something comes through and changes things, it's the aftermath. It's what happens after. In the wake of the storm, a very common expression you might hear. Next one after wake is ah, Renaissance. Renaissance. That's a good one to know. Renaissance. So re starts off re always remember re means again okay so my shoe came untied i have to retie it uh, renaissance is from the french meaning rebirth rebirth um, in english 
uh, a lot of times we'll have this word natal, <laughs> natal. Not sure if you've ever heard of natal, but mothers have to be very careful about prenatal care. So before their baby is born, you know, they have to eat the right things. So we actually use a form of this in English, but it comes from the French. So a renaissance is a rebirth. And there's a period of time in history called the renaissance. It's after the dark ages. So for a period of a few centuries, to use another word, um, just I'm not going to go into it here, but just in, mostly in Europe, mostly in Europe is where the dark ages occurred. Other parts of the world were, were doing other things, but um, just because of the, the structure of like people, most people in Europe for a few hundred years were just like working the land for other people who own the land. Uh, they weren't quite like slaves, but it was almost. So there wasn't a lot of like new inventions during the dark ages. But after the dark ages, there was a rebirth of knowledge and science and inventions. So that's what we call the, the Renaissance. The Renaissance is that period of time after people in Europe weren't doing a lot. There weren't any new inventions. And then suddenly things changed. People had, or enough people had more free time to look up at the sky and figure out how it worked. So that's Renaissance. But you could use that for pretty much anything. And in the article, they talk about poetry. So for a while, maybe people really weren't caring much about poetry. Maybe people weren't reading it. Maybe people weren't writing it. But maybe with Amanda Gorman and her powerful poem, it might create a renaissance for poetry. So it'll be a rebirth. It's been there before. It died down. Now it's coming back. So you can use renaissance anytime something was popular. It went away for a while and then it came back. You can say it's having its renaissance. Mm, Fortnite, let's say Fortnite. I think there was a time, right? Like season one, two, and three, people were really playing. But maybe season seven and eight, it was kind of like junk. What was the other game that came out? There was another game that people thought, oh, they're going to take over Fortnite. So people started playing that game. I can't remember what it was. But then people realized that other game was trash. They're like, oh, Fortnite, that's where it's at. And then everybody went back to Fortnite. You could say Fortnite was having a renaissance. It was having a rebirth. All right. Hopefully, I'll try to work in Fortnite when I can. Emerges. I like this one right here. And I actually think the picture is really good for this one. So, emerges. It means move out or away from something. Come into view. And you see that little egg right there? Well, it's, it's, it's breaking open. And it looks like there is a little chick that's emerging. That's emerging. Uh, right now, if I look out the window... The sun isn't quite up yet. I don't know if it even comes up here. Um, let's, let's take a look. Go bigger. I don't know. Let's take a look here. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I'm not, I'm not even sure if I'm actually. I think the sun comes up over. The sun comes up over that way. So, but if I went outside and took a look, I could say, oh, the sun is emerging in the sky. So it's slowly getting bigger. You can't see it. And then it suddenly, not suddenly comes up, but kind of slowly emerging often means slowly. Another uh, thing that could emerge, well, it's springtime now. And so plants, you plant a seed and then maybe in a few weeks, the plant will emerge out of the ground. So Emerge, emerge. Stillness. This one's not too bad if you think about it. It just means not a lot of things are moving. Stillness. 
if something is still, that's a verb, stillness is a noun. So there was some stillness in the air after the storm. So maybe in the wake of the storm, let's say that tornado again, the tornado comes through, messes everything up really loud. A lot of people have described a tornado sounding like a train comes through. Luckily, I've never experienced a tornado. I've been on the ground when a tornado has gone overhead. Uh, it was very loud, but I, I didn't quite hear a train noise. Some people say that. Um, so, but after the storm, maybe people are just figuring out what's going on. And there could be a stillness, no noise, no movement, especially after the storm came through and there was a lot of movement. So after it's just kind of some stillness and people are trying to pick up their lives. So stillness. A lot of times, oh, in class, some people get uncomfortable by stillness. If there's a stillness in the air, like I've had students, maybe you're one of those students, you say, so quiet in here. Some people can get a little unnerved from stillness. So just, just a quiet time. Maybe you like uh, to experience stillness when you wake up. Just need a couple minutes in the morning to collect yourself. Probably not though, right? Probably not. Probably hard for you to get out of bed. Uh, the last one. Is this the last one? I think it might be the last one. Rapid. No, this is not. We got a few more. Okay. We've got three more. So rapid, meaning fast. That's not too bad. Um, you can see that guy running. So um, when, when, you're, when you say run, though, it almost implies it's rapid. But you could say he or she rapidly walked down the hall. So I changed that a little bit to rapidly. It's an adverb, rapidly. And it will describe a verb, walked, rapid. Just know fast. Um, man, when you go into a restaurant and you order some food, most of the time you want that food to be delivered rapidly, right? Because you're probably hungry. You want it to be done quickly. So you'll often hear rapidly to describe a verb of some sort. That one's not too bad, right? The next one uh, can be a little bit bad, and that is alluding. Alluding. When you don't come right out and say something, that can be alluding. Um, when President Biden gave his speech, he alluded to a lot of past presidents. So saying that they had set up a good foundation for him. He may not have said President Obama, which is the president he served under, but he could have alluded to President Obama without actually saying his name. But he might say there was a, a great man that I had the pleasure of serving four years ago. So even though he doesn't say President Obama, he's alluding to President Obama. So not coming out and saying his name, but everybody knows what he's talking about, alluding to. Um, maybe, uh, oh, maybe you got in trouble with your parents. And this would be really upper level. Um, I don't think teenagers talk like this, but um, maybe they want you to put their coat on or your coat, your own coat on. Maybe they want you to put your coat on. All right. And then they say to you, yeah, you should put your coat on. Like, I'm not going to be cold. I'm good. It's all right. Let's go. And maybe they say, oh, well, uh, I seem to remember there was a time when you didn't wear your jacket and you were cold. You could say, are you alluding to the party we went to last week? And they didn't come out and say it, but maybe you were complaining when you went to that party that you were really cold. They didn't come out and, and say that party, but they were alluding to that party. So alluding, that, that can be a, a tricky one, but it's when you're not coming out and saying exactly what you want to say, 
but you're giving clues. You're alluding to the fact. A lot of times you'll hear that, alluding to the fact. And the last one, fad. One of my favorite ones, fad on this list. It means something was really popular at one time and then it went away. It doesn't stay popular for very long. So one fad that I remember, you were probably in like second grade or third grade. It was like that dab thing, the dab. Man, for one year, the dab was everywhere. Everyone was dabbing. And then it went away. That's a fad. Uh, one fad that I think teachers are very happy that did not continue uh, was the water bottle flipping thing. Flipping bottles, flipping bottles. Yeah, this is my flavored water right here. Gives me energy in the morning. I know it looks like a it looks like a urine sample, but it's not. I promise. Yeah, so flipping water bottles, that was really popular, and then it went away. Fidget spinners, you remember those? Really popular for a little while, then they went away. Those are fads. I hope you know everything about these words. I hope you watch this whole video. I hope you're amazing now. You're like, I know these words. I can pass a quiz on these words. All right. If you have any questions.